Hi guys, uh, the reason for doing this uh, video today is to help uh, audiophiles and guitar players, people who love tube technology, to be able to have a little better experience when uh, using vacuum tubes. And uh, we here at uh, R&D Vintage Electronics, we, we sell vacuum tubes like this to folks. And this is a vintage uh, vacuum tube. And it was made in 1966. It's a Mullard. It was made in England. Now, uh, when these vacuum tubes are, are put into circuits, there's a connection that are made on the bottom through the pins up into the electronics that are inside of the tube. Uh, many times when people uh, write to me and complain that they're having trouble with their tubes uh, with crackling sounds, humming sounds, stuff like that, I ask them, did you clean the pins? And I hear, well, I didn't know that you had to do that. Well, this this is a 50-year-old device, and the although the, pil the pins were made of stainless steel, as you can see on this, there's actually corrosion that does happen in outside elements, dust, and oil, and also impurities come out of the stainless uh, as electricity is uh, electrons flow through it. The um, that happens. So um, the purpose of this video is to show uh, number one how that can be a problem. You can see the copper. There's copper sulfate on there, and you know, iron oxide and all kinds of impurities that would not allow this to make a really good connection. And some of the uh, connections are low voltage, you know, and just a little bit of corrosion can stop the electron flow. So we, what we want to do is clean these pins. Now, um, we clean the pins so that you have a better, better connection. Now, the tools that you'll need for this job is a one, number one is a microfiber towel that, so that you can hold the, the tube in the microfiber towel without uh, harming the silk screen. So you just wrap it around like that. The next tool that you're going to need is a, an X-Acto knife that has a thin uh, blade. And so basically what I, the, the way I do is I hold the tube like this and I start with the first pin and I just make a scraping m motion this way like that now that that you can see the difference in the color between this and this and that is showing that you get the oxidation off then I move the tube slowly in this direction and basically I get around to the side of it and I've done the side now on this you can't, it's very difficult to get the back side, but you don't need to do the back side. You only need to do the sides of the tube really. I like to do the front because it makes it look a little nicer. But if you take a look at a socket, now this is a socket from, um, uh, this is a socket that this tube will go in. This is a socket from this is a nine pin novel socket. If you take a look at it, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can zoom in a little better. Uh, I think we're all the way there. And it's kind of hard to tell with this shot. But there you go. But you can see right there, this connection is only made on the sides of these pins. The, the back sides have a gap where this where the pin goes down. I have a little diagram to show you. So the socket, the socket looks like that, and the pin is like that. So you don't really, you're not really concerned with. Bottom line is you're not really concerned with scraping the back side of the pins that are in that are in 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 this area. You're only concerned with scraping the this part and the sides because that's where the connection is made. So then what I do is I go around, you know, all of these tubes the same way all the way around with this. And so you wouldn't want to do this with a gold a gold pin uh, because you scrape out the gold and you don't really need to do that. But with these steel pins, you you need to do that. So I go around all the way this way, you know, and then I turn the tube this way, 
and then go back to get the other side like this. And the, the what you're doing is you, you don't want the, the blade to be this way and you don't want it to be straight up and down you want it to be just angled that way and it doesn't really take a lot of pressure to do that and you don't want to push too hard because you can uh, damage this connection where the pin goes into the glass so you're just doing a light scraping making sure that you get enough all the oxidation the actual connection happens right about there so you want to make sure that you get that area clean all the way around from this side all the way around over to here and once you're done with that then you take a toothbrush and some Walmart uh, eyeglass cleaner that's what I use works great spray that on your spray that on your toothbrush and then keeping the microfiber towel tight to the tube you just uh, give it a nice cleaning like that all the way around and then you can take it out of the uh, of the microfiber towel and just kind of wipe off the excess that that's on the bottom and then you have a a tube now that looks like this that is totally clean all the way around and it'll make a really nice connection so that's all for now um, next time we're going to show you how, how to actually clean the tube without destroying the really cool uh, silk screen that is on the tubes. It's really fragile, it can come off easy, but we have a method for doing that. And so that's how you scrape the pins so that you make a good connection and you'll, and you'll have good sound when your guitar amplifier or in your amp that you're using for um, uh, home stereo. Thanks for now. Bye.